The movie opens during the time when Nazi Germany is starting to collapse. In the city of Falkenheim, we are introduced to a 10-year-old boy, Jojo Betzler, who is a true nationalist, eager to serve his country. Being indoctrinated with Nazi ideals, he has kept Adolf Hitler as his imaginary friend. Following this passion, he joins Deutsches Jungvolk, the junior section of the Hitler Youth, with his best friend Yorki. This training camp is run by one-eyed Captain Klesendorf and his second-in-command, Freddy Finkel. The boys are handed with a dagger before before taking them for various trainings such as grenade throwing, map reading, trench digging, and so on. Meanwhile, the girls are taught how to dress wounds, make beds, and how to get pregnant. Jojo does well in other activities, but he gets scared when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. He tries to sneak away, but he is noticed by the older boys. When it's time to practice killing, the boys hand Jojo a rabbit and instruct him to kill it. Scared and hesitant, he tries to let the animal go. However, one of the older boys grabs it and twists its neck before throwing it away. Following this, they start mocking Jojo for being a coward and call him by the nickname Jojo Rabbit. Upset, Jojo runs away into the woods and sits under a tree, sobbing. Not long after, his imaginary friend shows up and offers him a brief pep talk. He asserts that rabbits are brave, as they risk their life every day to get carrots and feed themselves. He then encourages Jojo to become like a rabbit, brave and careful. Inspired, Jojo runs back to the training site, where the captain is teaching the kids how to throw a grenade. Jojo seizes the grenade from his hand and hurls it away. Unfortunately, it bounces off a tree and lands on his feet before exploding. In the aftermath, the unconscious Jojo is rushed to the hospital, where he undergoes an emergency operation. Several days later, he is discharged from the hospital, and his mother, Rosie, brings him home. Jojo has big scars on his face, and his leg is injured. However, his mother is there to console him, assuring that she's always with him. Through their conversation, we learn that his father is supposedly serving on the Italian front, but has lost all contact, and his older sister, Inga, recently died of influenza. After Jojo recovers, Rosie takes him to Jungvolk headquarters to talk to Captain Klenzendorf, who has been demoted after the incident. She insists that her son be given some work to do, even if it isn't on the field, in order to make the boy feel included. As a result, Jojo is assigned with small tasks like spreading propaganda leaflets and collecting scrap for the war effort. One day, while working, he finds his mother staring at a group of people hanged from gallows in the public square. Jojo asks her about what they did, to which Rosie responds, what they could. Later after work, he returns home but doesn't find his mother in the house. While wandering around, he hears a noise coming from his late sister's room. He enters the room and finds a strange mark on the floor that goes up the wall. He takes out his dagger and uses it to open a section of the wall, revealing a secret place behind it. Intrigued, Jojo crawls inside to check and freaks out upon seeing a girl named Elsa hiding there. He runs out of the room and screams for his mother in panic, but as he's about to leave through the front door, Elsa catches him from behind and pushes him against the wall. She seizes his dagger and warns him against creating a scene. Furthermore, she admits that she's Jewish and that she was offered to stay there by his mother. She also claims that revealing this secret will cause him as well as his mother to be executed because helping Jewish people is a big crime. After Elsa returns to her hiding spot, Jojo runs back to his room and talks to his imaginary friend about this. After a while of deliberation, they reach a conclusion to negotiate and tell Elsa to find somewhere else to live. But as he enters his sister's room, he's startled by Elsa, prompting him to rush back to his room. Following this, Jojo has another discussion with Adolf, who suggests that he should win Elsa's trust so that he can make her leave easily. Later in the evening, when Rosie returns home, Jojo tells her that he heard noises from Inga's room. However, she brushes off his concern, claiming that it must be rats. That night, after putting him to bed, Rosie goes to see Elsa and tells her to be more careful and quiet. She also says that her son is a fanatic who won't go against the nation. The following day, Jojo goes for his swimming training, where he meets Klenzendorf and Finkel. He asks them about protocol upon encountering a Jew. In response, Klenzendorf tells him to contact the concerned authorities, who will execute them right away. The boy wonders how one can identify a Jew, to which Klenzendorf says that he doesn't know either, and someone should write a book about it. Upon returning home, Jojo tries to talk to Elsa again. He agrees to let her stay under the condition that she divulge everything about Jewish people, helping him in writing a book. Elsa then tells him that they're normal people, like others, but Jojo doesn't believe her. He instead asserts that the Jewish people are weaker, causing her to be enraged. As a result, she
she grabs him and swings around, demonstrating that she isn't weak. That night, Rosie returns home in a good mood, as the Allies have taken over Italy and France will be next. Jojo argues with her for being against their country, so Rosie brushes off the topic and simply tells him to eat. However, she doesn't eat herself, claiming that she isn't hungry. Suspecting that she's saving for Elsa, Jojo decides to eat her food as well. As they converse, the boy expresses his yearning for his father. Rosie then dons her husband's coat and paints a beard on her face before starting to talk like his father. She soon turns up the music and makes her son dance, cheering up his mood. The next day, Jojo gives Elsa a pen and a blank paper, asking her to draw where Jewish people live. He also probes her with questions about Jewish life and her own family, which she refuses to answer. However, she does tell him about her fiancé Nathan, whom she claims is fighting with the resistance group. Shortly after, she completes her drawing, The Head of Jojo, which is where she claims Jewish people live. After this, Jojo comes up with an idea and writes a letter, pretending to be Nathan, breaking up with her. He then reads it aloud to Elsa, who obviously doesn't believe it. Despite this, she's hurt to hear such harsh words attached to her fiancé's name, prompting her to storm back to her hiding spot. Feeling guilty, Jojo writes another letter, mentioning that the earlier one wasn't true and that he still loves her. This comforts Elsa, and she asks him to bring more of such letters in the future. From this point onwards, Jojo starts to visit her regularly, and they talk more often. Both of them begin to enjoy each other's company, slowly forming a friendship. However, Jojo's imaginary friend scolds him for aligning with a Jew, emphasizing that he shouldn't distract his German brain. One day, Jojo visits Jungfolk headquarters and meets Klenzendorf, who is talking with Finkel. The boy says that he's writing a book on Jewish people, but they laugh at him, believing that it's not real. Klenzendorf then shows him uniform designs he made to wear in the war. In the midst of their conversation, Jojo secretly steals some colored pencils and stuffs them in his pocket. Apart from all of this, he is assigned with the task of collecting scrap for the war effort. Later, while walking around the streets dressed as a robot, Jojo sees his mother handing out little anti-Nazi flyers. Here, it's revealed that Rosie is a part of the German resistance to Nazism. After work, Jojo returns home and gives the stolen colored pencils to Elsa. As they start conversing, he reminds her that it's illegal for a Nazi and a Jew to be friends. In response, Elsa asserts that he's not a Nazi because he hasn't hurt her and that he's simply a lonely kid trying to find a place to fit in. Jojo doesn't agree with her, but he opts not to argue. When Elsa expresses how dirty she has become, Jojo allows her to bathe and even lends her some clothes belonging to his late sister. Afterward, the duo works together on preparing meals when someone knocks on the door. Elsa quickly runs to her hiding spot while Jojo goes to answer the door. It's a group of high-ranking police officials, led by Herman, who are there for a routine inspection. As they carry out their investigation, Klenzendorf and Finkel arrive on the scene. Herman asks for the purpose of their visit, to which Klenzendorf claims that they have to bring some pamphlets to Jojo, who is working for them. Although this sounds like an excuse, Herman doesn't question them any further. Shortly after, Herman notices that Jojo's dagger is missing and inquires about the same. Just then, Elsa shows up, pretending to be Inga. She claims that she took her brother's dagger as he was bothering her with it. Suspicious, Herman asks for her identity card, to which Elsa grabs Inga's and hands it to Klenzendorf. The tension escalates when the former captain cross-checks the document by asking her date of birth. Elsa guesses it randomly, but Klenzendorf confirms it is accurate. Just before departing, Herman notices Jojo's book and starts going through it. They laugh at the demonic drawings of Jewish people, even making fun of them. This clearly upsets Elsa, but she doesn't express it. After the officials leave, Jojo and Elsa discover that the date of birth on the ID card is different. This makes them realize that Klenzendorf was helping them the entire time. Jojo says nobody really knows about Inga's demise, so Elsa can pretend to be her and live with them normally. But Elsa, who is hurt by the book's contents, reminds that they can't be friends. The following day, when Jojo goes out to get some food, he comes across a horrifying sight. His mother's body hanging in the public square. Overwhelmed with grief, he clings to her legs and cries his heart out. After staring at her body for hours, he returns home with his dagger in hand. He walks straight to Elsa and stabs her in the shoulder, blaming her for his mother's death. But before he can inflict severe harm, he breaks down in tears, prompting Elsa to console him. During this, she reveals that his father was also killed for working against Hitler, and that his mother kept it a secret so as not to upset him. Now that they don't have any money for food, Jojo begins to scavenge it from waste bins around the city. As the days pass by, his and Elsa's bond gets deeper and deeper. They spend their days enjoying faith letters from Nathan, sharing meals, and conversing. One day, Jojo is wandering around the streets when sudden chaos erupts as the city comes under attack. With a weak defense system, the civilian population, including the
the Young Folk members are pressed into combat service. Amidst the fierce gunfight, Jojo comes across Yorkie, who informs him of how the Allies have attacked their nation after Hitler's death. Soon after, Yorkie is given a handgun and sent to fight, whereas Jojo is provided with a uniform to prevent him from getting shot by their own side. Frightened, he then hides under a building until the war subsides. When everything approaches calm, he comes out to see the American soldiers removing Nazi flags and replacing them with their own, celebrating their victory. Jojo tries to get back home, but he's captured and taken to the rest of the Nazis. There, he finds Klenzendorf and goes to sit beside him. The latter says that he's a good boy and asks him to take care of his sister. He then takes off Jojo's jacket and spits at him, denouncing him as a Jew. As a result, the American soldiers send the boy home, while the rest of the Nazis are executed. Upon reaching home, Jojo fears that Elsa will now leave him, so he lies to her that Germany has won the war. But when he sees her upset, he forges a letter from Nathan, promising a means to smuggle her to Paris. At this point, Elsa discloses that Nathan died of tuberculosis the previous year, but she thanks Jojo for his comforting letters. <laughs> Now that he's caught, the boy confesses that he loves her, but she tells him that she loves him as a brother. Despite this, he is okay with it and decides to grant her freedom. He asks her to get ready and then leads her out of the house. Upon stepping outside, Elsa sees American soldiers driving around, making her realize the truth. She then slaps Jojo in the face for lying, but soon forgives him. The movie ends as the two of them dance, celebrating the fact that they're finally free. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.